Hello, my name is Bill Kinney. I'm a math professor at Bethel University in St. Paul, Minnesota. This is part nine of my video series about multivariable calculus, also sometimes called calculus three or even calculus four. You should have had at least one semester's worth of calculus before watching this series. This sub-series that I'm doing is about parametric curves. I also have another video series about parametric curves themselves where I start real slowly, I only assume people have pre-calculus going in, and I try to slowly build up the Mathematica code and the ideas to understand uh, parametric curves using calculus. Um, here I'm going to be doing the calculus computations very quickly. This particular video, we're going to be finding the speed of a motion model by the parametric curve, like we did in the last video, part 8. We're also going to be integrating to find the distance traveled along the parametric curve. And here's our example. Suppose you've got this system of parametric equations that you see here. T is time, that's the parameter, it's measured in seconds. And x and y are the coordinates of the point as it moves in the plane. They are functions of time. Distance is measured in meters. First we want to figure out the speed of the object as a function of time. We did that in the last video, I'll do it again in this one. Something new in this video is I will determine the distance traveled by the object First, from the, in the time interval from t equals 0 to t equals 2. Secondly, more generally, more abstractly, we will determine the distance traveled by the object as a function of time, starting from time equals 0. And finally, we will make a graph where there's a graph on the left showing the motion of the object. We'll do parametric plot for that. And a graph on the right showing both the speed and the distance traveled. I've actually already typed in the code for part D, so let's focus on parts A, B, and C. Part A, what is the speed as a function of time? Well, I'm going to use Mathematica right away to do these calculations. You should make sure you can do these calculations by hand. In fact, you should do them by hand as you watch this. Even if you don't have Mathematica, I think you'll get benefit out of this. You can enjoy seeing Mathematica do these calculations and make the graphs. You should try checking these things by hand. Here's how I enter the functions f and g. I also like to make, to make a habit of entering a point-valued function that I call c of t. In Mathematica, I'm not using parentheses around the point. I'm using curvy braces. This is technically something called a list in Mathematica, though for the purposes of what I'm doing here, you can think of it as a point. And I'm going to type the speed into Mathematica and have Mathematica do the calculations for me. Again, you should check these by hand. The formula I told you in the last video is that the speed is found by taking the square root of the sum of the squares of the derivatives of these coordinate functions f and g. That is the formula for the speed. I have not explained that. A full explanation requires the use of vectors, but if you know about vectors, if you know about velocity vectors, this formula for the speed should make sense to you. What does it equal? You should do the calculation by hand and simplify. In the end, here's the answer that you should get. The speed as a function of time is square root of 4t squared plus 9t to the force. Based on the units that were given, that would be in meters per second. That's the speed as a function of time. All right, that's part A. How about part B? Find the distance traveled from time equals 0 to time equals 2. I hope you remember from either your Calculus 1 or Calculus 2 course that for one-dimensional motion along a line in one direction, if you know the speed, you can find the distance traveled by integrating the speed. That same principle here does still work for two-dimensional motion. To find the distance traveled, we can integrate the speed. This basic math assistant palette has an integral symbol on it, so I just hit that button. I integrate from 0 to 2. The speed is a function of time to get the actual distance traveled. I can also type in the formula for the speed here. And then I can have Mathematica do it if I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and have Mathematica calculate the answer to this. Then I will give you some hints about how to do it by hand, some good hints. And I would encourage you to do it by hand, check the work that Mathematica does. You can type it into Mathematica like this since the speed function has been entered. So the answer is this number in meters, just meters. 
You can also get Mathematica to approximate that so it makes more sense to you. I've shown you how to do that with the capital N function in Mathematica where I type a slash slash capital N at the end of an input. You also can put capital N at the beginning of an input. Put the input inside square, brace, square brackets like this. This is approximately 9.07 meters for the distance traveled. All right. How could you do that by hand? I just want to give you a hint about how to do it by hand. Let's think about the indefinite integral of the speed. It looks like a, a difficult integral to do, and it is more challenging than your typical integral, I guess, <clears throat> but it is doable. With a bit of a trick, you could factor a 4t squared out of the expression under the square root as long as you put 1 plus 9 fourths t squared inside the parentheses like this. Check that, that does work. You also can use the fact that the square root of a product is the product of the square roots. So I can write two square roots like this. <clears throat> Initially you look at this and it doesn't look much better. But it is, and in fact, if you imagine that t is positive, you can simplify this expression to 2t. Now, in general, if t is negative, it simplifies to 2 times the absolute value of t, and you should know that. But we are thinking about top positive values of t. This is going to be sufficient to replace that with a 2t to help us get the antiderivative for at least positive values of t. Since we assume t is greater than or equal to 0 here. All right. I hope you look at this integral and say to yourself, after thinking about it for a few seconds, I think I could do that integral. All you need to do is a substitution. Let u or v or w, whatever letter you want to use, equal this expression under the square root. And then if that's u, du is almost sitting there for you. Not exactly. You should let u, u equal 1 plus 9 fourths t squared. Think about that. That'll mean du will be 9 halves t dt. So you just have to adjust for this 2. The fact that that's not a 9 halves makes it a little tricky. But it is doable. In the end, here's what you should get. This indefinite integral can be written as 8 over 27 times 1 plus 9 fourths t squared to the 3 halves power plus c. It's one way to write it. There are other ways. In fact, Mathematica gives another way. If I type this into Mathematica with an indefinite integral symbol there, in input mode, I can enter that. Here's Mathematica's answer. First of all, Mathematica doesn't put the plus c. That's OK. You should put the plus c. <clears throat> Secondly, it is the same thing. t squared to the 3 halves is going to be t to the third. That'll cancel with that t to the third. Also, you could factor a 4 out of the, the expression in the parentheses here. And then 4 to the 3 halves is 8. That's where the 8 comes from. So this is effectively giving you the same answer. But this expression that you see here is not the speed, or excuse me, not the distance traveled. What is the distance traveled? I could call it dist of t. It is related to this one. If you use this antiderivative along with the fundamental theorem of calculus, treating the upper limit of the integral as a variable, let me type it in here like that, you're going to get this, the distance traveled, but you have to plug in the upper limit, and then subtract what you get when you plug in the lower limit, and that's not going to give us exactly this. What will it give us? Well, first of all, let me just write this in an abstract form. I like using a different letter for my variable of integration than the letter that's up here. You should realize some people are sloppy and they use the same letter. I am emphasizing here that the distance traveled is found by integrating from 0 to t, so I do put my t for this function up in this upper limit of integration. This can be used as your antiderivative for making use of the fundamental theorem of calculus. This needs to be evaluated. 
tau, which is the Greek version of t, going from 0 up to tau equals t. And when you do that, I should put a tau in here too. You get this expression minus 8 27 because when you plug in t equals 0 up here, you get 1 to the 3 halves, which is 1. You could factor the 827s out of this, but you don't have to. I'm going to enter this function. I guess I will factor the 827s out when I enter it. I'm entering the formula for the distance traveled. This again is the answer for the distance traveled as a function of time. This is really part C. I didn't say that. Highlight that here. The answer to part um, A again was this specific amount here. That many meters. This is in meters, by the way. Enter that function into Mathematica. Now we're ready to watch the animation showing the distance traveled and speed on the right and the motion of the object on the left. I probably should use a different window here. It looks like well, my, my origin's not staying constant. It's not a real big deal. Um, let me just say the, the red is the speed, the distance traveled is the blue. It looks like the value of the blue is going to end up going higher than the value of the red here, though they do have different units. The red is the derivative of the blue, so the red is giving you the slopes of the blue. The blue is the integral of the red, also going through the origin. The, the values of the blue give you areas underneath the red. All right, here's your exercise. Take a moment to pause the video and try to solve this. And now we'll go down to my solution. In this exercise, the speed as a formula, as a function of t, is given by this expression, this equation here. The distance traveled, also called arc length, by the way, is found by uh, doing the integral from 0 to 3. And you should get that for the distance traveled. The distance traveled as a function of time is given by this expression, and I forgot to replace the taus with t's here. Oops. And finally, here's the motion for this exercise. It's not that much different from the other one, I think. Yeah, and again, the speed is in red, the distance is in blue, the red is the derivative of the blue, the blue is the integral of the red, also going through the origin. Think about that, look at the picture, see if that makes sense.